This is an art attack? This is an art attack? This is Art Attack! Must put those scissors away sometime. Hello there, how are you? Do you know what I've been doing? I have discovered how to make paper spring into life. Literally. Come and have a look at this. Cut two long, thin strips of paper, different colours if you like, and then place one of them across the other one, like that, so you've got a sort of L shape, and then just tape those two ends into place. Now you have to just do this very carefully, it's quite fiddly to start with. There it is, you've got your L shape. And then fold the bottom piece up and over the other piece, like that. And then this piece up and over the other piece. And then again, the idea is just to keep going, folding the bottom piece up and over, like that. And the reason I'm using two different colours is, A, it makes it easier for you to see, like this, and B, it actually creates a great effect when you've finished. And just keep going, folding all your paper up and over. And then when you get to the end, like that, if there's any paper left, just trim it off. But that isn't. It's nice, nicely finished off very neatly there. And I'll just tape those last two bits together, a bit of tape under and over onto the top, like that. And there you have a paper spring. And if you make one out of cardboard, it's even springier. Look at that. <laughs> Try that again. And then if you tape a couple of long pieces of paper together and make a very long one, it sort of waggles in the wind. And what do you use them for? Well, they look really good if you stick things on the end of them. Here, I've made a sort of spring card by sticking a cutout cardboard heart, stuck that onto the spring, and stuck the spring onto the card. Or you could try this. Take a piece of coloured card and then with a chunky felt tip pen, just draw a hairy body onto your card like that and then put two eyes on the top of your hairy body, just like that, and a mouth. And then draw eight feet around the edge of your card and cut everything out and then stick two of the feet onto a paper spring like that and then stick four paper springs onto your hairy body like that and then some cotton onto the top and you have a sort of mad mobile which wobbles if you shake it and if you do make a mad mobile don't forget to draw on both sides and if you make a few of them they make great party decorations. Try it yourself. Handy things, paper springs. Very handy! <laughs> Hello, it's me, the head. I don't know why he went to all that bother of cutting two long strips of paper sticking them together in an L shape and then folding them over one another to make a paper spring. Cause look what I've discovered. A much quicker way of making paper spring. <laughs>
Oh, very nice. But don't you go knocking nails into buildings. You can do it with pins in cards. Then wind string around the pins. You want to see mine? Oh, no! Someone must have taken the pins out. Oh. Do you know, one of the great things about an ordinary crayon is all the different tones and shades that you can get from one colour just by pressing lighter and harder. But what happens if you haven't got a crayon? If all you've got is a felt-tip pen. Well, you can't press harder or lighter with that because the ink all comes out the same. Try this. Just draw lines across the area that you want to shade darker, all the way across like that, and you can see it starts to look darker already. And if you put lines across those first lines that you've just drawn in the opposite direction, just crossing in the middle like that, it starts to look even darker. And this method of shading is called cross-hatching. It's literally shading using lines that cross each other. Now, I want this area to be darker still, so I'm just going to put more cross-hatching on, this time in another direction. There it is. You don't have to be me doing this. And just, again, cross-hatching there, doing lines that go in the opposite direction. And to make it even darker, it's a good idea to just put your lines closer together. And there it is. Now, one pen that's really good for practicing your cross-hatching is just an ordinary ballpoint pen because you can draw really quickly with it. Watch this. Now, I'm just going to go across the whole of the area on this policeman that I want to shade. So I'm just quickly going across like that. And also on this leg here, I mustn't forget his boots. Now, I want this side of him to be darker still, so I'm going to cross-hatch right across the right-hand side. There he is, like that. Now, there's certain areas I want to be even darker. Places like his belt. I'll just go in there with even more cross-hatching. And then his boots, like this. And again, you can do this neat if you like, or you can do it quite quickly. And it all adds to that sort of arty effect. And there it is. Try it yourself. Shading using cross-hatching. Hello, my name is Daniel. I made this banana by mixing salt, flour and water. After I moulded it, I baked it in the oven. My name is Gemma. I made my maze out of dough. After it was baked and painted, I stuck on green paper leaves. I drew the corn kernels with a felt-tip pen. I am Rebecca. This apple was kneaded in dough. The hardest part was making the pattern on the leaves. I painted it red and varnished it. Ah, fantastic modelling dough. And it's very cheap. Now, to make your homemade modelling dough, all you need, two cups of plain flour. Throw them in there like that. One cup of salt. In it goes. Three quarts a cup of water. Splash that in. And that will do it. But if you want to make some super modelling dough, just add in two tablespoons of cream of tartar and two tablespoons of cooking oil. And that will just make it that easier to model with. Then get your hands stuck in, mix it all round, really get your fingers in there, and you'll have to knead it around for three or four minutes and just knead it into a dough. And when you've done that, it will look something like that. And then you're ready to model. And all you have to do is just sprinkle some flour onto a flat surface like that, spread it out, and then you can make anything you like out of your dough. Try this. Tear off a clump of your modelling dough and just roll it into a flat sausage like that. It's a sort of thick, dumpy sausage, really. Leave that there. So do one, do another one, and a third one, and then a small dumpy one. And then just pinch the small dumpy one into a point at the end, 
like that. And you can even curl it over like that if you want. Doesn't matter if it starts to crack. Put that to one side. And then just bend one of your dumpy sausages into an arc. Put that to one side. Bend another one into an arc. See if you can guess what it is I'm doing. And then your third long one. Just try and stand it up. Now you might have to just push it down a bit. And then bend the end over like that into a sort of, well, I'm going to give it away now, aren't I? A sort of head shape. There you are. And then just brush on some water onto the top of the head. Any ideas yet? <laughs> and then pinch two little bits of dough and put them on top for eyes. Like that. Looks like he's crying there. <laughs> and then he will be now. Watch this. Just punch one, two nostrils in the head like that. And then put them all on some kitchen foil and on a baking tray and pop them in the oven on gas mark one, 150 degrees Celsius. Now do us a favour, if you're going to be popping things in the oven, be very careful, or better still, get someone else to do it for you. And when you pull in your tray out of the oven, after two hours, you need to do it for two hours, wear these, the old oven gloves, because this will be very hot. And when it eventually does cool down, just pull them off your tray and it will have gone rock solid. Look at that. And it doesn't matter if you've got a few little cracks in the bottom there, it all adds to the effect. And anyway, I'm going to paint it now. So you can paint it using poster paint or acrylic paint. I'm just going to slop it on here to show you. That's it. Just get it into all those, all the nostrils and all the cracks at the bottom. Like that. And you can take some time over it. I'm just doing it quickly to show you. And if you do a neat job out of it, when you're finished, it will look something like that. Look at that. And I've even painted the eyes white. And the rest of it will look something like that. And that. And what about that? A doe Loch Ness monster. And if you just leave the paint to dry and then coat it with a layer of PVA glue, when the PVA has gone dry, it will have gone hard and solid and see-through and given it this fantastic finish. Try it yourself. Make anything you like. And I'll give you the recipe again. To make homemade modelling dough, you need two cups of plain flour, one cup of salt, three quarters of a cup of water, and to turn it into super dough, throw in two tablespoons of cooking oil and two tablespoons of cream of tartar. Cook your models for two hours, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra! Mind zone.